Let's take a look at the anti-Markovnikov edition of HBr. We're going to be using this reaction right here as the example on this worksheet. This is a radical reaction, and the first step that needs to happen in this reaction is the initiation step, the step that forms the radicals. The radical is formed in this reaction from the peroxide reagent. The peroxide reagent is going to be initiated by either light or heat, just like a Br2 or a Cl2. So I'm just going to use light as my initiator. And we get um, in this initiation reaction a homolytic cleavage between the oxygen-oxygen bond. So we form two OH radicals. We call these hydroxyl radicals. So these are the radicals that are used in this reaction. And the next thing that we're going to do is take one of these hydroxyl radicals and we are going to react it with HBr, our reagent HBr, to form a bromine radical. So this is going to be a propagation. Remember propagation reactions? Propagation steps always have three curved arrows. We have to break a bond homolytically and we also have, so that's going to require two arrows and then we also have to do something with this radical. So we're going to take this radical and kind of move it out into outer space here. Um, we're going to be breaking, as I said, we're breaking the HBr bond homolytically to form a bromine radical. So that means we want one of the electrons in this bond to go on to the bromine so that we can get that bromine radical. And the other electron from the HBr bond is gonna go out into outer space to connect with the hydroxyl radical. So our second product of this reaction is water, H2O, which is not gonna be coming up again in the rest of this mechanism. So now that we have our bromine radical, we're gonna react it with our alkene. So let me begin by just drawing my bromine radical, and then I'm gonna slide back up again to the top of the screen just so I can make sure that I copy the alkene correctly. Here's the alkene that we're looking at, 3-methyl-1-butene. Um, 3-methyl-1-butene. So this tells us uh, we're reacting the bromine radical with the alkene to form a brominated alkyl radical. So that means that we are going to be doing another propagation, another three arrows, three curved arrows. We're gonna be, um, looks like we're gonna be doing addition to a pi bond. So we're gonna be putting the bromine onto this molecule, onto either one of these two carbons of the double bond. I'm gonna begin by just taking one of my curved arrows and kind of drawing it here into outer space, getting it ready. I know now that I'm gonna need two more curved arrows coming from this double bond. One of the curved arrows is gonna be meeting up with the bromine to form a carbon-bromine bond. The other curved arrow coming off of this, so we're gonna have two curved arrows coming off of this double bond. The other curved arrow is gonna be forming the alkyl radical. So that means that one of the electrons in this pi bond is either going to go here as a, a radical or it's going to go here as a radical. And we need to think about where's the best place to position that unpaired electron. Do we want the unpaired electron on this carbon right here, which is a secondary carbon, or do we want the unpaired electron on this carbon, which is primary? You know, thinking in terms of stability, we're gonna want that single radical electron on our secondary carbon, so I'm gonna put it right there. My curved arrows are kind of a, a mess right now. And then my third curved arrow um, from that double bond, so these curved arrows are coming from the double bond, Third curved arrow meeting up with the bromine to form the carbon-bromine bond. Let's see what that product is gonna look like. So there's the unpaired electron. That's this arrow right there, unpaired electron. And then this arrow plus this arrow is making a carbon-bromine bond right there. Since we put the unpaired electron on this carbon atom, we're gonna be putting the bromine onto this carbon atom right here. And we're almost there in terms of products. We just need to propose either a termination or a propagation reaction that's gonna convert this radical into our neutral alkene and, or al, um, alkyl halide. And there are, of course, a variety of different ways that this, that this reaction could actually happen. If I'm like trying to be, you know, thinking about what kind of things were formed in this particular mechanism or what kind of things we actually have available, maybe I'll do a propagation reaction with HBr because 
what I want to put on, on this last position right here is just a hydrogen atom. So maybe I'll do a propagation reaction with HBr. I'm going to break that HBr bond homolytically. One of the electrons is going to go over here to meet up with the radical. And that's going to give me my product. And it's also going to be creating another bromine radical that could be used to do this reaction all over again. So there's the mechanism for the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. In terms of comparing it to the Markovnikov addition of HBr, um, obviously it's different because this reaction proceeds via a radical intermediate, whereas the Markovnikov addition of HBr proceeds via a carbocation intermediate. The other way that these two mechanisms are different is that in the anti-Markovnikov addition reaction, we put the bromine on the, on the double bond first, and the hydrogen goes on second. In the Markovnikov addition, we put the hydrogen on first and the bromine on second, so we're reversing the order in which things are placed on, on the molecule. Um, and, but other than that, I feel like the mechanisms are, are pretty similar.